while the CEO and editor of the Nevada Independent, John Ralston, who has a sterling Silver State track record when it comes to predictions in Nevada about elections. Now, Ralston is predicting a narrow victory for Kamala Harris over Donald Trump by less than half a point. Ralston is also predicting a win for Democratic incumbent Senator Jackie Rosen over her Republican opponent, Sam Brown, with a more comfortable margin of five points. John joins us now from Las Vegas. Polls there open at the top of the hour. John, good morning. It is great to have you with us, the man who knows Nevada better than anybody. So tell us about this call that you've made. Again, this is just a prediction based on the data that you've seen and what you know about the state. How did you come to that conclusion? Well, thanks for building me up so much, Willie. Now, if I'm wrong, it's really going to look bad. But <laughs> Here's the analysis I did, and I have to trust sources on both sides who say this race is going to be very, very close in their data. Listen, it's a weird year in Nevada. You guys know this. Usually the Democrats bank a bunch of votes in early voting, and they're ahead, and the Republicans can't catch up. It's the reverse this time. The Republicans have built up a lead of about 40,000 ballots or so, but a lot of mail ballots in Clark County, and we've become a state where mail is big, have not come in yet. And those are very heavily Democratic. They've been two to one in the last few posts. And so uh, you have to trust what's happened in the last four presidential cycles here, which is that the so-called Reed machine, named for the late Harry Reed, has been able to get out the vote. Not just in people mailing their uh, ballots in, Willie, but in dropping them in drop boxes today on Election Day. There are going to be tens of thousands of those, I believe, and I think Harris will just eke it out, but I think it's going to be close. Yeah, you know, John, uh, we had been talking for some time about Ann Seltzer since her poll out, and almost always gets Iowa right. You always have gotten the Nevada presidential election right. Every prediction has been correct. This one a little more difficult for you because you're having to wade through independence. I remember in 2020, people making uh, terrible miscalculations about independence in Florida, thinking mm. that they were going to break three or four percent for the Democrats. They broke overwhelmingly for Donald Trump in 2020. So you've wandered into that sort of political minefield of independence, and you've come out uh, suggesting that most likely there, we, again, with your undefeated streak on the line, uh, you've decided <laughs> that they're going to break more for Democrats. Why is that? I know there's some kind of uh, Crimson Tide joke I could make here, but I'm not going to do that to you, Joe. So yeah, God bless me, you. That's good. Uh, and I won't talk about the undefeated Wolverines last year, but let, let's, let's get back to something important and, and, and why I think that the independents are going to break this year for Harris and why it's so important in Nevada this year. They passed an automatic voter registration bill that has caused a number of nonpartisan uh, to explode. They're the plurality in the state now, Joe, and they're a third. They're a third of, of the actual electorate, or, or a little less than that. It's going to be 30 percent or above of the electorate. And the Democrats knew this was happening, and they registered a lot of their voters as nonpartisans because they, they, that was their preference. But what the Democrats here have done expertly has, has been to find their voters and get them to the polls. One other data point, take it for what it's worth, is the, the last really credible poll that was taken, and you know how difficult it is to poll in Nevada, was the New York Times poll. It showed Harris winning by three. I think that's probably too much, but it showed her winning independence by eight or nine points. I think she needs to win independence by about five points to win this race. So it's doable. Mm -hmm. So, John, talk to us a little bit more about the ground game there. Harry Reid's famous ground game, the Culinary Workers Union. We know the role they play there in Las Vegas and the impact it could also have on a hotly contested Senate race. Yeah, Jonathan, you're right about that. And if you look to the Senate race in 2022, what happened was Adam Laxalt was ahead of Catherine Cortez Masto on election night before all the mail ballots had been counted. And then because of what the Culinary Union, which is the biggest union by far in Nevada, 60,000 or so members did, getting its members to go to those drop boxes I mentioned earlier and cast their votes. It's not just the culinary union, though. It, there's a coordinated campaign with other nonprofits and other unions that are really out there. Now, that's not to say the Republicans are being are doing nothing. It's not the Reed machine versus Elon Musk and Charlie Kirk. That wouldn't be a fair fight. They are doing some things on the ground. They did enough in 22 so that there was a split verdict, right? Cortez Masto won, but 
Republican uh, Joe Lombardo won for governor. They're hoping that will happen again. But my prediction was based on the Reed machine doing what it always does, which is being able to get their votes out. Hey, Ralston and Tileman, um, I have a, uh, my first question to you. There's the double barrel question. The first is, you know, when you started putting out, uh, started looking at the early vote, a lot of people on the right um, seized on your analysis uh, as, as a sign of like a national trend and also the trend in Nevada. I think, I think the takeaway from, from looking at what you've said about the early vote across now where we're sitting here on election day is that that early surge in Republican early voting uh, has been now counteracted to the point that that's the, well, kind of one of the stories of this early vote was that there was a lot of Republican early vote that flooded in uh, at, the, at the opening of it. But in the closing days, Democrats have caught up. And then my second question is how crucial the vote from the Bellagio and the and Caesars Palace is going to be to putting Harris over the top. How much does that factor in? Well, yeah, so let me answer the second question. First, I, I think, John, that uh, when, when you talk about the Strip and you talk about this goes all the way back, as you know, they have these caucuses on the Strip. The, the, the culinary gets its voter, gets its workers to the polls. I think that uh, is, is, is going to happen today. But let's talk about where this Republican early ballot lead is coming from, John. It's coming from rural Nevada almost entirely. Right. And the, that is only going to end up being 10 to 12 percent of the vote. It it is almost exhausted now. So the rest of the vote that's out there is from the urban areas, and there's only two of them, Clark County and, and, and Washoe County, which is Reno. Now, the Democrats are behind in, in Washoe County, but they think they can catch up. If Washoe County is awash and all those mail ballots that favor the Democrats come in in Clark County, thanks to the Culinary Union and the Reed Machine and everything else, then I think that she can squeak by. But those votes have to come in. And, and we don't know that yet. You know, uh, John, in states like Georgia, uh, Pennsylvania, we've had governors talking about how they're going to expedite voting, that we're not going to be waiting for a very long time. It seems like Nevada counts votes day of, and then they count one additional vote every day for the next <laughs> three months. Um, I'm wondering, have there been any uh, changes, any reforms by the state government or by the local government to move that process up a bit more so Nevada can, uh, can put its, uh, its complete tally out for people to see. Yeah, so I would prefer us not to be the mockery uh, on, on that national television the way we were uh, in, in the last cycle. The answer to your question, Joe, is yes, they have changed some things. They, they, the, the new Secretary of State has, has, has uh, allowed counties to start tabulating mail ballots early. They're going to start counting uh, the actual ballots almost as soon as they come in. So there should be earlier results. I'm not saying the election going to be decided tonight, though. I think it's going to be very, very close, but we need to look tonight. First thing you should look for tonight, because it's 80, 85 percent of the vote is going to be in already before Election Day is when those first votes pop up. Look to see what kind of lead uh, Kamala Harris has in Clark County. If it's very small, she's in trouble. But if it's five, six, seven points, she has a chance to win the state. So she needs, what would you say? She needs, when those first votes go out, she needs five, six, seven percent lead uh, to, to win Nevada? So Joe Biden won uh, Clark County by nine points, Joe, and he won uh, the state by two and a half points. So if you get down below, say, seven points overall right. in Clark County, you're you're in trouble. But if she's if she's ahead by five or six points in the first tally, she has a chance to build that up through all of the ballots that are going to be counted today. All right, there CEO and editor of the Nevada Independent, John Ralston, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. And John, very wise move, turning off your mentions. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I think we all should do that. <laughs>